Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. So today we're going to just follow up on the video we did last week, which was solar and kinetic watches. And now I'll hop on and I'll do a spring drive watch, explain to you what spring drive is. Uh, spring drive is Seiko's proprietary movement technology that uh, they, they basically pioneered. No one else has anything remotely, remotely like it. It is truly an achievement in watchmaking. Uh, spring drive came from the late 70s, early 80s, when the quartz revolution basically almost killed all mechanical uh, wristwatches. Uh, an engineer at Seiko had this idea for spring drive, and it took something like 15 years, several, not several hundred, I think it was 200 and change patents, uh, for them to finally come out with a producible spring drive uh, technology, and they released it in the late 80s in Basel. And it's, it's spring drive is found in Grand Seiko, um, Ananta, which I don't think they're doing Ananta anymore, uh, Credor, and various other the, the high high end lines. Generally, you know, n none of your affordable Seikos. And why is spring drive interesting? Well, spring drive uh, from a mechanical engineer like myself, uh, spring drive is truly the marriage of electrical engineering and mechanical engineering. Uh, they were able to put both of them together and make a truly mechanical movement that has some electrical components um, and they come together to form this beautiful mechanically driven wristwatch and actually have electrical components that's powered by the watch itself it's it's quite ingenious um it's very simple to explain in design it's uh it, obviously by the time and patents it took them very difficult to do on the scale of, of a wristwatch what's interesting for me as a as a mechanical engineer is that you know this is the true marriage of mechanical engineering and electrical engineering we have a mechanical movement with a couple of electrical components it, it's not like kinetic kinetic was you know you we take a rotor we charge a battery and then we power a watch uh, all known technologies, you know, a generator is known, We've, we know generators, it's easy, it's a motor that runs backwards, uh, and obviously battery technology, it's a rechargeable battery. Uh, it's still great, but, you know, not a, not a ton of ingenuity. Spring drive is, is total ingenuity. So I will do my own wrist check, and then we'll go over to the table. I have a Grand Seiko here with spring drive. Uh, I will do my best to explain the technology. I really didn't study up for this. I'm going to tell you everything that I know off the top of my head. So it may seem a little choppy. I'm going to try. I've tried to arrange my thoughts over the last couple of days in my mind. Um, I generally do not work off of notes. I don't like them. Uh, so we'll get over there and we'll take a look. And uh, let's get on with my wrist check real quick. Scrooge McDuck, time is money watch. And on the other wrist, I'm wearing a Meister Singer, single-handed uh, auto. Cool watches. Um, you can actually tell the time with a really frightening degree of uh, accuracy. You know, w within a couple of minutes, considering it's only got an hour hand. Anyway, let's uh, let's check out Spring Drive. So this is Grand Seiko model number SBGA001. It is powered by Seiko's 9R65 Spring Drive movement. This video is going to be more about Spring Drive, less about the watch. Uh, I'm not going to go into the watch details too much, but you can see. It's obviously a very nice watch. It's beautiful. Uh, fully made in Japan. Bracelet second to none. Clasp second to none. Dial is gorgeous. Fit and finish is impeccable. I mean, everything you'd expect. So now you can obviously see that the watch is stopped. It's not running. That's on purpose. Um, I want to wind it up and show you what happens when you start the watch. It is an automatic, and it can be hand-wound. Thanks to Seiko's Spron material, it runs for uh, around three days. It's got a three-day power reserve, so if you wear it, uh, you know, you can take it off for a day or two and put it back on as opposed to, you know, your conventional 40-hour power reserve or even on your 6R15 Seikos, your 50-hour power reserve. This is like a full 72 hours, uh, so that's a, that's a good power reserve. Uh, you could take this thing off, like I said, for, you know, for two and a half straight days and put it back on, and then thanks to spring drive technology, uh, its accuracy won't waver. Well, let's talk about accuracy quickly. Uh, you know, Seiko says around one, one to two seconds a day accuracy, and then they say around 15 seconds a month. It's mostly hogwash. Uh, most people report getting a couple of seconds a week. It's generally an extremely, extremely accurate watch, but it's not a certified chronometer. You know, there's no certifications with it. Uh, so maybe they say that, you know, just to be on the safe side, but, you know, it's going to be a lot better than that. So I'm going to pick it up and we'll wind it and uh, I'm going to show you something. So the watch has a screw down crown, so I'm going to unscrew the crown. It's unscrewed, and now I'm going to wind it. 
and I want you to pay extra close attention to the seconds hand. Do you see what's happening? Did you see that? For around a few seconds, you see how fast the seconds hand went? That was not fast forward. I have not touched a thing. I have not edited or clipped anything together. That is the movement of the hand unfettered by the spring drive technology. Uh, their quote unquote tri single regulator didn't click, didn't kick in yet. So the watch runs fast, extremely fast. You saw that. It's got to be at least two to one uh, for, you know, maybe just a couple of seconds. And then it, and now, you know, full spring drive goodness is taking over and we're getting great accuracy. And, th and this will always happen. That phenomenon you saw only happens when the watch is dead, totally dead, and you start it up. So you can see that the as I turn it, you see the power reserve needle? Let me move the hands out of the way. Okay. So now the power reserve needle starts to go up as I wind it, so we're getting a full wind. Okay, so I will now seat the crown back down. The watch is running. So let us talk about how does spring drive differ from you know regular mechanical watch technology. So if you watch some of my other watch and learns, the one previous to this, and I believe it's watch and learn number four as well, I talk about automatic watches, how the mainspring powers an escape wheel, and the escape wheel basically kicks a balance forwards and backwards very fast at around 28,800 beats per hour, depending on the uh, movement of watch. It could be a little bit slower. It could be faster. That balance wheel limits the mainspring and how fast it unwinds. It's basically beating, and every beat is a little bit of an unwinding of the mainspring. And that's how a mechanical watch keeps its accuracy. So a spring drive has no balance. It really has no escapement to say. Uh, it's got a mainspring. Let's flip it over. See, it's a full automatic. Oh, you know what? I'll open it up. Okay, so I've opened up the bracelet so we can, you know, get a, a better look at the back. Obviously, it's uh, it's done very nice. You can see the rotor, which is extremely, you know, extremely free to move. But from the back, it really looks like a, a mechanical watch. You can see the mainspring barrel right here by my by my thumb, and that's what the that's where the mainspring is. That 72 hour mainspring. But then where the escapement generally is, oh, here, let me peel back the blue sticker a bit. Where the escapement generally is, I don't know if you could see it, you see a set of wheels that are moving very fast. Yeah, I, don't know if you, I don't know if you could see that. I'll try to turn it so the light doesn't disturb it as much. But you can see a series of wheels, and they're spinning pretty quickly. There we go. I don't know. I can kind of see it now in the viewfinder. Uh, top one spinning a lot faster than the bottom one, and that is the glide wheel. And this is something new now. So they've taken the escapement out of the watch. So Seiko's replaced the escapement with what they call the tri regulator. It's going to regulate three kinds of energy. Mechanical, which is the energy that's stored up in the mainspring. Electrical, which um, there's some electrical energy things obviously going on here. And also kinetic, which is the movement of the second hand. Now you can kind of rename them however you want, but that's more or less what it's doing. So how does the watch work? Uh, it, the simplest way for me to describe it is to get in your car and put your foot on the gas until you're going a steady 40, 40 miles an hour on a flat road and then apply the brake with your foot still on the accelerator. Apply the brake until you achieve 30 miles an hour and keep driving that way. And that's the way spring drive technology works. It, it's a constant braking where uh, on the automatic or mechanical watch, it's basically just trying to keep constant time. This is constantly trying to slow the watch down to keep its accuracy. So where does it get its accuracy from? Well, believe it or not, the spring drive uses quartz crystals. It's not a quartz-driven watch uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I even hesitate to even say quartz, but it truly has a quartz crystal. It is a Seiko-grown quartz crystal, and it is the pick of the litter of quartz crystals. So it's an extremely accurate crystal, and that's what gives the watch its stated 15 seconds per month, but really in practice a couple of seconds per month accuracy. Uh, so the watch has a quartz crystal running, uh, and, and you, so you saw on the back those wheels that were spinning fast, the wheels that you saw at the top here that were spinning. So I'm going to try to go through the whole thing now in, in one swoop. So now that you know all that, you got the mainspring. The mainspring unwinds. It spins these wheels. This wheel is more or less like a generator. It's got a stator on it, um, you know, an armature stator. Uh, it spins, it produces electrical energy. 
that electrical energy is used on an electromagnet to break, B-R-A-K-E, slow down, the second hand to a certain speed. Eight times per second, it references how much time the watch has elapsed on the glide wheel. So it looks to say, okay, we've gone an eighth of a second. And then at the same time, it looks at the quartz oscillator. And the quartz oscillator is ticking at the same time. And it sees how much the quartz oscillator oscillated. Say so that five times fast. And it compares the two. And it either slows down or speeds up the seconds hand as necessary. It is a closed feedback loop, which is, I think, the first for any watch and still the same for any watch. Uh, it's the, they're the only ones that do it. So it's, I'll say it's a quartz-referenced watch, not a quartz-driven watch. It's truly driven by a mechanical spring, but it's quartz-referenced. So imagine inside, basically, there's another little clock running. Let's say it that way. There's another little clock running, a very accurate clock. And the mechanical clock speaks to the electrical clock, the quartz clock, eight times a second and says, how am I doing? And the quartz clock eight times a second says, speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down. And it constantly speeds up and slows down the seconds hand so that it can be in sync with the quartz oscillator. I say speed up, really speed up just means apply less brake. It is an electromagnetic brake. It's not a friction brake. It's not, you know, a brake pad squeezing it. Uh, it's a magnetic field that's inducing to try to slow the seconds hand down. So I said the trisynchro regulator. So it's, it is uh, regulating the mechanical energy from the mainspring. Got that? It is generating electrical energy from that wheel that's spinning really fast. That's electrical energy. And then it's also using the electromagnetic brake, another energy, to slow the seconds hand down. Three energies. The watch is basically one big power plant. Uh, it generates its own electricity. It uses its electricity for all of its own functionality. It's an extremely, extremely small amount of electricity that it needs. But that is why when we started the watch before, when I started the video, when we started it, it ran for about 10 seconds because it was dead. It doesn't have a battery. It doesn't have any kind of storage cell. So it ran for a few seconds without that brake applied. And then after a few seconds, when it got to around here, you saw... All of a sudden, everything kicks in, the circuits kick in, and the braking force happens, and it, and it is now referencing that quartz crystal to slow the watch down to proper time. It is truly, truly ingenious. Like I said, very simple in, you know, it's very simple in uh, theory. It's just to get all these little pieces to talk to each other. Amazing. So some of the benefits, obviously, since it's a feedback, you know, I had mentioned before, and I've mentioned in other videos, uh, isochronism. When your watch gets down to low power, watches tend to run erratic. They like to run at full power. This watch doesn't care. It can be two minutes away from dead. It'll still be accurate because the electromagnetic brake is constantly, constantly referencing the quartz crystal to see how much brake it should apply. Do I need less brake? Do I need more brake to keep the watch accurate? It's, it's a, like I said, ingenious. It's a breakthrough as an engineer. I can fully appreciate the technology. I guess, obviously, you, you might want to know what something like this costs. Well, this is a Grand Seiko, and you know most Grand Seiko spring drives, I would say this is an opening price, $4,600. Uh, There's not many you're going to find for less than that at, at retail. Um, but like I said before, it's it really is a really nice watch. The fit and finish is fantastic. See everything. The bracelet is super amazing. The crown clasp everything about it is perfect you know and that's what you'd expect this is like the pride of seiko uh the pride of japanese watchmaking everything is here it's all embedded uh inside this awesome spring drive movement i didn't say this before but you know it's obvious the second hand does not tick at all there's absolutely no ticking it's smooth and extremely silent i say extremely silent because i don't know i can't hear anything i can put it up to my ear i can't hear anything uh, if you put it on a time grapher, nothing registers because there really is no ticking. Everything is extremely, extremely smooth. This has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you Seiko's spring drive technology. If you like this video, please like it. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do so at this time. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can.